Open Sim Bone Rules, Parenting and Waiting. This is part two of making Animesh. The next step is that Open Sim requires special names and a special order of the armature. So you can just double click on the name of a bone in the outliner and type in a new name. So I'm going to call this M pelvis because OpenSim requires that every armature must have an M pelvis. And the M pelvis can only connect to a few other bones like the torso and the left and right hip. But it can also attach to a bone named M tail 1. And I happen to know from experience that the tail is allowed to have six bones, and that's why I stopped when I had six bones here. M, tail two, M, tail three, and so on. And oops, I made a mistake. These things have to be spelled exactly right. The way you spell M, tail two is lowercase m, capital T, lowercase a, I, L, two, M, tail four, M tail five. Oh, I messed up again. Let's finish M tail six and then go back and check. There's another uppercase M there. M tail four. So now I have a mesh and I have an armature going through it and I have a um, I have them all named properly and I have them organized in a way that OpenSim allows you to organize them. What is the next step? The next step is uh, you want to tell Blender and therefore the DAE file and therefore OpenSim which armature this, uh, this skin is parented to or, or it, what, which armature is going to bend that skin. And the way you do that is in object mode, you select the, the mesh that you want animated and then you hit shift and click on the armature. Sometimes uh, you can click on the bones themselves uh, and sometimes that doesn't work but it always works to click on the ends of them. So now I've selected the skin first to say here's something I want to animate. Which armature is going to animate it? I selected that second and the the process of attaching this uh, the skin to those bones is called parenting. And so sure enough, there's a tool here called Parent, and it has a bunch of options. Well, we're going to use automatic weights because that's going to save you a lot of time. And even the experts say that automatic weights doesn't always work. It sometimes produces unnatural looking bends and it sometimes produces avatars that look kind of unnatural and it takes an artist's touch to make the shoulders work just right. But we don't have shoulders or anything so we can use automatic weights. Well, before we do the next step, let's take a look at our, at our work. So back in object mode, you can select the, the skin and you, now that you've collect, selected a mesh, you're allowed to do things like edit it or uh, you can weight paint it. And weight painting means that you can see by colors which bones affect which vertexes. Well, the very tip of the tail there is red and that means it's 100% uh, affected by some bone. Which bone is it affected by? Well, while we're in weight paint mode, we can go over here to the properties panel and we can look at this thing which is called the data properties and it shows us all of our bones. So I can say the M pelvis 100% affects uh, the vertexes down there. The M tail selects 100% uh, some vertexes in the middle here and then it fades away to blue, blue meaning it has no effect at all up there. And each tailbone affects uh, vertexes that are further up and further up until we get to the top. This was done by automatic weight painting and it's uh, really uh, peachy keen and for a lot of things it works really well. We can also go back to object mode and this time select our armature 
And now the armature, you've seen edit mode, but you haven't seen pose mode. Pose mode in the armature means that now when I rotate the child bones of this one, they rotate with it. And all the vertices that are painted red for this one move with it. And the ones that are painted colors closer to blue don't move. That is enough for today. The next video, we'll talk about saving Animesh and loading them in-world.